We welcome again our live stream brethren. We very much appreciate your fellowship in these gatherings. Amen. This is the second message in a series on the second coming of Christ. It'll be a series of 40 messages in which I will uh, attempt to cover the subject in a reasonably thorough manner and addressing a number of things, a number of issues. <clears throat> Tonight, the seriousness of corrupting the doctrine of the second coming of Christ. Our text from 2 Peter reminds us that there are some people that mock the idea of Christ coming again. Unfortunately, some of these do exist in the Christian community. There's a number, a growing number of people who have adopted a view called the preterist view that say Christ has already come <clears throat> the second time. And they mock the idea of him coming again. It's a serious doctrine. You know what it is? Uh, there are, are three appearings of Christ that are proclaimed in, in a single passage of Scripture in Hebrews 9, 24, 26, and 28. Verse 24 says he's now appearing in the presence of God for us. Verse 26 says once in the end of the world he appeared to put away his sin by the sacrifice of himself. Verse 28 says to them that look for him till he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Now I've emphasized that you cannot be wrong about Jesus. Amen. You, you cannot. Amen. God has not given people, any people, the liberty to be wrong about Christ, his identity, mm -hmm. or his work, or what he's doing now, or what he's going to do. Anything that's included in the record God has given of his son God's going to take it personal if a person distorts it. Amen. Amen. It's the most serious distortion of Scripture there is, is a distortion of Scripture pertaining to Christ. Amen. Now, it's a tendency, unfortunate tendency in men to corrupt what they don't understand. It's just like a human yeah. <laughs> tendency. What they don't understand, they tend to corrupt. So those who don't understand the coming of the Lord, which is one of the clearer doctrines of Scripture, That's right. they feel at liberty to corrupt it and destroy it, distort it because they don't understand it. Paul wrote to Timothy these words, 1 Timothy 1, 5 through 7. The end of the commandment, it's the, we would say the objective of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart of a good conscience and faith unfeigned. If you don't get that done, you're disobedient. Yeah, mm -hmm. now you got to, yeah that's the truth. From which some have swerved and have turned aside to vain jangling, yeah. desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. <laughs> they're, they're ignorant. Yeah, right. They're in pulpits. They've been hired by churches. Yeah. They're in professional positions. They don't know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them deal extensively with this mm -hmm. coming of the Lord of coming of the Lord. Now, there is a number of things said in Scripture about the reality of corrupting mm -hmm. the Word of God. Well, it doesn't mean they go in and issue a new Bible, although they do have, they are doing that too these days. But it means the way they teach it, mm -hmm. they don't say what God once said. Amen. Now, here's a word on that from uh, 2 Corinthians 2.17. We are not as many... This is already happening in the first century. We are not as many 
which corrupt the word of God. We are not like that. As many... But as of sincerity, it's uh, unvarnished, uncomplicated, and pure. That means people are corrupted aren't sincere. Yes, amen. So I want to be dogmatic about this. You cannot be sincerely wrong. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Not about Jesus. No. But we don't, we don't give them credit for being sincere. Amen. They're deceived. We are not as many which corrupt the word of God, mm -hmm. but as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God, and I say in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. So I'm, I'm speaking tonight with God in mind even more than you. Mm -hmm. Speaking in the sight of God, yes. when you talk about Jesus, now you're in the sight of God. Yes. Ephesians 4.22 tells us that there is a part of us that is, is corrupt. That you put off concerning the former conversation of the old man, which is corrupt. Mm -hmm. So that's why people, this is the old nature, this is the Adamic nature testifying about Jesus, and I just can't get it right. Yeah. Uh -huh. The corruption of the word of God is associated often with, with gain, fleshly gain. 1 Timothy 6, 5 says, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds. <laughs> you see how... He describes people like this. Yeah. Perverse disputes of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing mm -hmm. we dedicate this to all the prosperity people. Yeah. We always like to have a word to give to people. This is what we give to the prosperity people, supposing mm -hmm. that gain is godliness. Mm -hmm. Well, what should we do? From such... Withdraw thyself. Amen. Get out of there. Amen. That's the word from the king now. Mm -hmm. I'm commenting on corruption. Mm -hmm. You can't corrupt. The seriousness of corrupting the doctrine of Christ. Now, corrupt minds, they, they evidence a certain resistance to the truth. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's not an innocent type thing. 2 Timothy 3.8 says, Now, as Janies and Jambres, that's those magicians that withstood Moses. As Janies and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. reprobate concerning the faith. I mean, these are people God has rejected. Other people get upset about that. Well, they just let them get upset. That's what it says. Men of, they are reprobate yeah. uh -huh. concerning the faith. What that means is that God won't even give these people faith. Yeah. Amen. Amen. When they hear the word of God, faith won't come. Uh -huh. Because they're destitute. They're of the truth. They're spiritual paupers yeah. when it comes to the truth. A wise scribe that's instructed in the kingdom of God has things new and old in his bag. They don't have anything in their bag. They have a bag of lies. That's all they got. Amen. Emphasize the seriousness of corrupting. Mm -hmm. You can see, you should be able to see that God is completely 100% intolerant of those who misrepresent what he said. Amen. Amen. Yes. Jude talks about this in a non-complimentary manner. Jude, verse 10. These speak evil of those things which they know not. But what they know naturally is Bruce Beats. In those things they corrupt themselves. <laughs> he likens it brute beasts. He also says a brute beast take, to be taken and destroyed. Yeah. Talk about people corrupt. See, this is how God feels about people corrupt, mm -hmm. distort, misrepresent what he said, particularly about Christ. Peter writes of Paul, as in all so in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, and he'd just been talking about the coming of the Lord, Second mm -hmm. Peter 3, 10, the, to this verse. Mm -hmm. 
in which there are some things hard to be understood, not hard for, it wasn't hard for Peter to understand. It's hard for these people, that pretenders to understand. Hard to be understand was either unlearned and unstable rest, twist, as they do also the other scriptures to their own destruction, not to the scriptures' destruction. Mm -hmm. yeah. God's going to destroy them for doing this. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, religion has got too polite these days. So people say, well, they really didn't mean it. They just don't understand. So I'm sorry that this is not how God addresses these kind of people. Amen. He didn't do it under the law and the prophets. When you read about him, his diatribes against false prophets, he was completely intolerant. He didn't say, well, he just didn't have the advantage of learning. No, you're living now in God's world mm -hmm. where God has made his will and his mind known. And if people don't get it right, it's their fault. Amen. Now, people that are honest will say, I don't know. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a different story. I don't understand. Well, that's a different... That's, mm -hmm. We're not talking about those kind of people. We're talking about people that distort it. When they don't understand it, they twist it so it makes sense to them. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Now, just previous to this uh, text I read, they that are unlearned, they haven't been taught by God, they don't know the things of God. They're ignorant about the things of God. And unstable, they vacillate. Mm -hmm. To and fro. Rest. Now, this is what he said just previous to that. So I'm, sort of, I'm connecting this with the coming of the Lord. 2 Peter 3.10. The day of the Lord will come. The day of the Lord will come. Amen. As a thief in the night, in the which the heavens and earth shall pass away with a great noise, See, there are people who teach when he comes to the thief in the night, he's going to sneak the church out. Yeah. No one's going to know what happened. There's going to be airplanes all of a sudden. Oh, passengers aren't in the seats. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, this, this is oh, taught. Yeah. Yeah. All of a sudden, cities are going to be great. Mm -hmm. Masses of people disappear. Mm -hmm. That's when he comes as a thief in the night. Yeah. They teach. Well, here Peter uses that very language. Yeah. As a thief in the night, in the which the heavens have passed away with a great noise, uh -huh. the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Well, that's, that doesn't sound like secret at all. <laughs> Seeing then that all these things should be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hasting unto, <laughs> like running toward it, the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth, we're in drill of righteousness. We're not looking for the end of this world. We're looking for the beginning of the next. <laughs> All right, now, if, you, if a person doesn't have this right, God takes it personal. And there are a lot of people who don't have this right. Some of them, they're not teaching it. They just personally don't know it right. But I would talk about the ones that taught them this. The ones that taught them to think crooked. They're in for big trouble. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, that's right. God's not going to be. God's not going to overlook this. He's not going to say, "Well, they did the best they could." No, they didn't do the best they could. They yeah. did the worst they could. Yeah. 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 Amen. Remember now, my point is, mm -hmm. you cannot distort this doctrine. Mm -hmm. The equation is this: Scripture plus the wisdom of men. Mm -hmm equals false doctrine. That's right. Amen. So if you've got a Bible, the text is on the top, mm -hmm. and the comments of the man are on the bottom, that's not a Bible. Yeah. Amen. I'm sorry, it's not a Bible. That's right. If it is, then we can let the Pharisees get by and the scribes and Pharisees with what they did. Yeah. As soon as you add something to the Bible, you may think it's clarifying the Bible. Mm -hmm. The Bible should just is just God's word. Scripture should be, be confined to Scripture. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And somebody with a lot of money should mandate a change, take the word Bible off all these 
Bibles that have the commentaries and all in them. Just take the word Bible off and just say a view of the Bible or something like that. Why? Because God doesn't allow this kind of distortion. Because as soon as you couple Scripture up with human wisdom, Scripture's not Scripture anymore. Yes. You, it's vo it's, it has no power anymore. Yes. He says you, you make void mm -hmm. the Scriptures with your tradition yes. and nullify it. You can't distort it. <clears throat> now I want to show here at how many things that coming to the Lord is associated with. So that if you distort the doctrine, you distort the things that are associated with it or tied to it. So let's look at this, uh, some things that the coming of the Lord is associated with or attached to. So when you talk about the coming of the Lord, you, this, this, su these subjects are part of it. And the first is the resurrection of the dead. 1 Corinthians 15, 52 says, In a moment in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. And in case you're wondering what that trump is, 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 says, The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, uh -huh. and the dead in Christ Amen. shall rise first, not first in in comparison with the wicked, first in comparison with the living, yeah. then we which are alive and remain. See this? Yeah. So if you tamper with the doctrine of Christ, you're tampering with the resurrection, the doctrine yeah. of the resurrection of the dead. Yeah. And Peter associates it with the passing away of the heavens and earth that thou art. 2 Peter 3.10, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens will pass away with a great noise. I say it with a great noise. Amen. And the elements shall not with fervent heat in the earth also, and the works therein shall be burned up. The works meaning what men did in it. All right, now you tamper with the second coming of Christ, you're tampering with the end of the world. Yeah, that's right. If you stall it, then you stall this. If Jesus can come in undetected, yeah. then this can happen undetected. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's distorted, see? Yeah. And there's the coming of the Lord is connected with the gathering of the righteous. Jesus said this himself, Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in the heaven, and then shall all tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven. I said, They shall see... The Son of Man coming, as to all the tribes of the earth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they shall see right. the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall, that's the end at this time, he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. There's that trumpet again. Uh -huh. They shall gather together his elect from the four winds and from one end of heaven uh -huh. to the other. Now, that's going to happen when Jesus comes again. Amen. Amen. All the tribes of the earth that see him come, they're going to in some way see this. Now, it's not that there's a... All this is going to happen in a twinkling of an eye, but there, there is a holy sequence right. to all of this. Amen. We know that the wicked will be gathered out. We know the saints will be, that are living will be changed before the others, that the... Ones that are dead will be raised before the saints are changed. But this is all going to happen like in an instant. But uh, in a microscopic view of it, there's a, there's a sequence connected with it. And you can't throw this sequence. When Jesus comes, every person that God has received is going to be gathered up by the angels who took care of these people when they were living. And everyone that's got, left the earth, they're going to be gathered from heaven, and those living will be gathered, and those that die to be gathered. It's all going to happen. So if you distort the coming of the Lord, you've, you've in, distorted this. At the time Jesus comes, there's also going to be a separation of the godly and the wicked. It's going to take place. Jesus gave this in Matthew 25. 
When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. When shall he do it? When he comes in his glory. Yeah. Then shall he sit on the throne of his glory. Not on the throne of Jerusalem, the throne of his glory. Yeah. Amen. Uh -huh. Heaven and earth pass away. There ain't going to be any Jerusalem to have a throne on. That's right. Amen. As far as this world is concerned. Yeah. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divides his sheep and goats. Mm -hmm. Now Jesus said in the parable of the wheat and the tares, he said the tares were going to be taken out first. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. And the ones that are left are going to be the righteous. Yeah. Yeah. The wicked are the ones taken away. Yeah, that's right. yeah. They're the ones that are raptured. <laughs> He went, when Noah was saved, he took the wicked away, yeah. and Noah was left. That's right. Amen. Destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Gomorrah. He took Sodom and Gomorrah away, and Lot was left. Right. Uh -huh. So the ones left behind, he, this would really mess up that series of books, there'd be an enormous amount of money. <laughs> Had to be refunded. Uh -huh. The people saw this. Yeah, this is going to happen when Jesus comes. Uh -huh. Why is he going to separate the wicked first? Because they're the intruders. Amen. This field belonged to God. Yeah. This earth was made for the righteous. It wasn't made for the wicked. Yes, they're the intruders. The devil right. has sowed his children. Yes, so they'll be gathered out as the intruders Amen. first. So if you, if you tamper with the coming of the Lord, and you've tampered with the separation of the wicked and the righteous, and of course when Jesus comes, the righteous are going to be glorified. It's 1 Corinthians 15, 23. Every man in his own order. Christ the first fruits after the day that the Christ it is coming. There he's talking about putting on immortality. Glorification has to do with putting on immortality and incorruptibility. Philippians 3 states, Our conversation or manner of life is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Lord, Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that I might be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he's able to subdue all things to himself. Then it will be fulfilled whom he justified, then he also glorified. Yeah. They're going to be glorified. Mm -hmm. Now you cannot substantiate that a glorified person can be seen as a glorified person and dwell with an unglorified person. Mm -hmm. yeah. An immortal being cannot dwell in a recognized manner mm -hmm. with an corruptible person. Mm -hmm. okay. This is why Jesus put on another form. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, he'd just come down and everybody had seen him like he was. But he humbled himself, and his, his humanity hid his deity. That's what it did. It was, like, it was like a cloak that hid his deity. And the more human you make Jesus, the less clear you can see him. And when Jesus comes again, the wicked are going to be destroyed. Now, the Thessalonian brethren, they only had the advantage of three weeks with Paul, boy, look what they look what happened to him in three weeks. There's been some people 50 years this hasn't happened to them. Yeah. They were confused about the coming of the Lord. They thought when Jesus came that the fake pope people that died were going to miss it. That's what they thought. Somebody told them this, evidently, and that's what they thought. So Paul cleared it up to them. No, he says, uh, you who are troubled... Uh, just calm down and rest with us now. 2 Thessalonians 1, 7. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, I say with, with his mighty angels, in flaming fire, mm -hmm. taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and the glory of his power. He goes on to say this is going to happen when the saints are glorified. Yeah. Uh -huh. This is going to happen at the same time the saints are glorified. This is going to happen. Uh -huh. He's going to come from heaven with his mighty angels. You Just one angel. 
would scare people like they, Israel. <laughs> Just think that, that was one angel. One angel led them out of Egypt, you remember? And uh, God told them, don't provoke that angel. He won't overlook it because angels, they're not tolerant. They're, they're not tolerant. They're impatient. God's got to tell them, stop destroying the city, or they just wipe it out. Yeah, that's, right. that's the way it is. You're going to come with all the angels. Mm -hmm. Both Matthew and Luke says he's going to come in his glory, all of his glory, uh -huh. and the glory of the Father, and the glory of the holy angels. That's a lot of glory, and that, yeah. that, that could happen undetected. I mean, you've got to be like demented to believe that. God has got to deprive you of wisdom like That's he did right. the ostrich. So you to believe that. Yeah. Now when Jesus comes again, see there's the destruction of the wicked. So if you distort the coming of the Lord, you distort the teaching of the destruction of the wicked. Uh -huh. The day of judgment. <laughs> That's associated with the coming of Christ. Second uh -huh. Timothy 4.1 I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing? This. Yeah. At his appearing. That's yeah. when it's going to happen. So there's some people have two judgments, maybe three, some have more. Yeah. You say, well, there's uh, the judgment seat of Christ and the great white throne judgment. That's two different judgments. Yeah. Who said it's two different judgments? Who yeah. said you could divide God and Christ that way? Yeah. Have they forgotten that Jesus is sitting in God's throne? Yeah. They've forgotten that? Well, the day of judgment is going to occur, the day of reckoning. Jesus left misunderstood. He's not going to come back that way. Amen. He left, it looked like he's weak. He's not coming back. He was crucified through weakness, but he's not coming back. In weakness. So you distort the coming of the Lord, you distort the thoughts of the day of judgment. And when he comes back, we're going to be like him and appear before him. We'll appear, we will appear before him. Little children abide in him that when he shall appear we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. 1 John 2.28 So Paul, when Jesus comes again, Paul would see the ones he ministered. John would see the ones to whom he ministered. And he thought, we don't want to be ashamed. Mm -hmm. And when he comes, when he comes. That's right. 1 John 3, 2 says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. We're like incognito. Yeah. We're like, we're to what we're going to be like David was to his kingship. Mm -hmm. When he was, Samuel anointed him, but he didn't take the throne for some, yeah, right. yeah. till some years later. Yeah. So we're anointed now, kings. And yeah. We've been accepted, but it doesn't, it doesn't look that way. <laughs> They'd never pass the kind of laws they are passing if they knew who we were. Yeah. Well, even when I tell you this, they wouldn't. They would not be doing this. When he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So, in Philippians 3.20 says, when he shall appear, then we, sh then we will also appear with him in glory. Or Colossians 3.4, we will appear with him in glory. We will appear, not be raptured and nobody knowing what happened. We will appear with him. And then the most formidable uh, opponent that we have among men called the wicked one or the man of sin or the son of perdition is a number of terms ascribed in Scripture to him. He's going to be destroyed when Jesus comes. He's not going to run out and fight. Well, they're going to gather together. Satan's armies will gather together to fight. They will. They'll get, but then before they can fight, fire comes down and it's all over. That's right. Amen. Amen. So they're not going to actually be any battle fought That's right. against Christ. Mm -hmm. 2 Thessalonians 2.8 Then, when he comes, then shall the wicked one be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, his coming, 
because you're coming in glory. Mm -hmm. Even him who's working is after, who's coming is after the working of Satan with all powers and signs and lying wonders. There's the most formidable opponent. And all it takes is for Jesus to show up, yes, amen. <laughs> and, and he's destroyed. Amen. Amen. So exactly, what does it do when you say that Jesus is going to come secretly? Amen. See, this distorts all these other truths that we That's talked right. about. Yes. Jesus went out unknown, but he's not coming back unknown. Yeah. This would be, he'd have to hum, Jesus would have to humble himself to descend from heaven without everybody in heaven and earth and hell on it. Mm -hmm. He would have to humble himself or tone his glory down or something like, something, well, he'll hover in the air. Mm -hmm. Well, exactly how far up will he hover, you know? Or can, is the Lord, can the Lord hover mm -hmm. once he leaves the place? There's no sign in Scripture of the Lord ever hovering anywhere. That's right. When he went up to heaven, he just went up. That's right. When he came down from the, the first time, he just came down. Uh -huh. When he's coming again, he's coming again. He's not hovering. That's right. See, this doctrine is taught. He's going to hover. Nobody will see him. We'll all join the Lord there. <laughs> Nobody will know what happened. How's God get glory out of someone not knowing what happened when his son left to gather the saints. What glory exactly does God get out of that? Amen. And John says in 1 John 2.28, Now little children abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. <clears throat> Those are not, now I just gave you a few 11 doctrines there, mm -hmm. teachings of Scripture, that would, if you distort the coming of Christ, you have, those are all distorted too. Yeah. Yeah. Now I want to mention briefly some of the doctrines that are held about the coming of the Lord. God is not the author of any of these. These are all produced by human wisdom, every single one of them. Human wisdom and human analysis produced them. The most popular one, it appears, is premillennialism. Millennial means thousand years, and it's referring to the thousand years that's mentioned in Revelation, which we'll be dealing with eventually. And this doctrine teaches that Jesus will come before this thousand year period, and that after that, he did sneak the saints out. Then after a great tribulation, he'll come back and set up his throne in Jerusalem. And a thousand-year reign will commence. And they're not too clear about, like, what's going to happen after that. They're not too clear about this. That's premillennial. He's going to sneak the church out. Havoc's going to break out on the earth. He's going to come back, set up his throne in Jerusalem, reign a thousand years, and people live to be a thousand years old. The post-millennial view, which is actually the closest one to the truth, said that a thousand-year reign will happen. It's, they say it's not just literal, but when the knowledge of the Lord covers the earth, as the waters cover the sea, and following that period of time, then the Lord will come. Well, all right, I, I can concur with that. The amillennial view is that we are presently in that thousand year reign. The Jews have been written off and there are no signs that indicate his coming. Then there's the preterist view which teaches that Jesus has already come, the resurrection has already occurred and nothing is presently left to be fulfilled. And when a person used to attend our renewals, an older man, sitting at a table with us one day, at one of the renewals, and he said, there's nothing left to be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And I said, so this, this guy's embraced that teaching, has he? So I said, what about the resurrection of the dead? He said, that's already taken place. It's a spiritual resurrection. That's the preterist view. All right, here's something. All four of these views have something in common. 
The coming of Christ is not the main point in any of those views. It's not the main point. But see, when the second coming of Christ is addressed in Scripture, it's like the main point. That's right. Amen. The fundamental thing. But it's, a, it's kind of an after we've established our particular view, then we talk about the coming of the Lord. So the coming of the Lord is not the point in any of those views. And those views have created such an area of confusion mm -hmm. that most preachers and teachers back away from this subject. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because they've they try and read books about these, what these positions stand for, and they, something in them tells them, well, this can't be altogether right. So they just kind of stay away from the subject. So it's created, it, the doctrine has been corrupted, and so it has created a lot of other corruptions that have taken place. Men, what men have done in these different positions, they've assembled texts from various places in Scripture. They specialize in particularly Daniel and Revelation, some choose out of Ezekiel. And they gather these texts and they bundle them together and, and create these doctrines. <coughs> now the impact of these corruptive views is, as I have said, the corruption of the understanding of these other very major teachings. The resurrection of the dead, the end of the world, the gathering of the righteous, the removal of the wicked, the day of judgment, the glorification of the righteous, the reign of Jesus, the reward of the righteous, and the conversion of Israel. All of those have been tremendously distorted yeah, right. because of these distorted views of the second coming of Christ. And I want to make this statement again, that you cannot be wrong about Jesus. Yes, amen. You cannot. Mm -hmm. This is what John calls, 1 John 5, 10 and 11, the record, the gospel is the record God has given of his son. And if someone distorts that record, mm -hmm. they not only have distorted all these doctrines, they've distorted salvation, yeah. uh -huh. they've distorted the imputation of righteousness, mm -hmm. they've distorted the truth of sanctification, They've distorted everything. They've distorted because it's all tied. It all depends on Jesus coming back. That's why these three appearances are mentioned in Hebrews 9. He appeared in the beginning to put away sin. He's now appearing before God. There's no reason to come anymore but one more time. That's right. Amen. Amen. He's not coming to deal with sin when he comes. So there's going to be no battle against the wicked because that's dealing with sin. He's not going to come to do that. It's all over. So we'll do our best to establish the truth about Christ's second coming. Of course, I, can, I can't give you any more than I've seen, you understand, but I've seen some things here. And you'll find as the truth clears up to you, if, it, if it's not clear now, as the truth, truth clears up to you, you'll become suspicious of a lot of things you hear taught about the coming of the Lord. You'll begin to say, eh, that doesn't sound... That's God's way of alerting you, see? Amen. It doesn't mesh. Yeah. Okay. doesn't fit in. So the second coming of Christ is not like a separate subject that only the extra, extra biblical knowledge people can probe into this is kind of a separate from everything else. It's, no, it's tied to everything else. It's associated with everything else. So we've got to be right about it. Amen. And it's, it boils down, in, in a sense, as relatively simple from a, from a sum, uh, summation point of view, is that Jesus is coming, and you've got to be ready when, yeah, it, when yeah, he does. Uh, so that's kind of what, yeah, that's right. <laughs> kind of what it all boils down to. And if you're ready when he comes, mm -hmm. you're in. Amen. If you're not, you're out. That's right. Amen. Now just, if that's all you knew about it right there, wouldn't you conclude that you had to be right about Amen. your understanding of this, of this coming? Well, God be praised that God has spoken so much about it, and every time he speaks about it, there's a note of clarity. Now, you'll just have to kind of go over these texts that I mentioned, but every time he mentions the second coming of Christ, he clears something up. He never introduces a subject and cause confusion. Mm -hmm. 
It always clarifies. Brother uh, Jeremy has our exhortation tonight.